All right, in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the electrical activity in the heart. So before we get started, we got to take a look at the review of those cardiac muscle cells. First off, if you look here, this is a cardiac muscle cell. You'll note that it has only one nucleus and it contains cross striations. And the other thing about it is it's a branch, meaning uh, if you look here, there's like one branch here and then another branch here. And this allows the them to kind of... Uh, get together in like a lock interlocking fashion. The other thing about the uh, cardiac muscle cells that are really important is they have these things called intercalated disc and they provide synchronicity across all of the cells. So that means that every time an action potential is delivered uh, into the electrical activity, electrical conduction system of the heart, all the heart cells are gonna be together, which kind of leads me to my next point, which is this concept called functional syncytium. That means that there's gonna be one movement from a single stimulus. So you get one action potential and all of them work together. This also reinforces this all or none principle. And the all or none principle is that either all of the cardiac cells are gonna contract or none of them are gonna contract. You don't get contractility of a few muscle cells, you're gonna get all of them or none of them. So now let's take a look at the electrical framing in the heart. In the heart, there are several nodes that are uh, that stimulate contraction. You have the SA node or the sinoatrial node and they have the, uh, the atrioventricular node or the AV node. And the uh, sinoatrial node is the pacemaker of the heart. It's this guy right here. And it's going to initiate the action potentials. And it's going to happen 70 to 80 times per minute. What happens is it's located in the right atrium. And then the action potential is sent to the atrial conducting pathway to the uh, to both the atria, which are kind of here, and then also across um here. They can't see it in this image, but there it extends kind of out this way. And it's going to create that atrial systole, so you'll get the contraction of the atrium. Now, the atrioventricular node is located down here, and it's at the base. And what happens is there's going to be a, just a slight delay of the action potential for a fraction of the second. So what happens is you get this the, uh, con the action potential on the SA node, both atria contract, and then uh, you're going to get that atrial uh, or the action potential sent down into the ventricular conduction system. Now, the ventri ventricular con conduction system is broken up to pretty much three things. You've got the bundle of his, you've got the left and right bundle bra uh, branches, and then you have these things called Purkinje fibers. So if we look here, here's the bundle of his, which is kind of goes down this way. And uh, the bundle of his connects the atrioventricular node to the interventricular spe uh, septum, which is this um, kind of structure right here. It's going to be sent down the bundle of his, and then it's going to go to the left and right bundle, bundle branches in the, IV, in the interventricular septum, and then it sends the uh, action potential out, kind of outward to these uh, respective ventricles. And near the end, you're going to get the Purkinje fibers. And what happens is the uh, these are your Purkinje fibers way down here. Um, there's also going to be some kind of throughout. And what happens is, is as that action potential is carried from those bundle branches, it's going to uh, send those out to the uh, rest of the ventricles, and it's going to get that ventricular contraction or, that ventri or the ventricular systole. So how do we actually measure electrical conductivity in the heart? Well, we do it through this thing called the EKG or an electrocardiogram. And in order to understand the way it works, we have to look at the basic structure of it. So this is a what we call a lead two EKG. And you have a P wave, which is this structure right here. Then you have the QRS, which is also known as a QRS complex. You have, and then you have the T wave. And then there are measurements from any of these things. So you'll have a PR interval, you'll have a, a QT interval, you'll have an ST interval. So if we look at this, you have Q, which is here, you have R, which is up here, and then you have S. So this is why it's called a QRS complex. And then you'll look from here to here. That's the ST um, segment. So if what we do is we compare this um, graph essentially to what's happening during the conduction. So during uh, during this P wave, you're going to see atrial systole. So you'll get that. Um, this is going to be your time that the uh, the SA node is conducting that action potential. Then you have the PR interval, and that's going to be the time from your uh, from the sinoatrial node to the AV node. That's going to be that slight delay that we talked about. Then you have the QRS complex, and that's going to be your ventricular systole, and that's when the, the ventricles are really squeezing. And the ST segment, which is this guy here, is the ventricular depolarization to repolarization. When this happens, the heart's getting ready to fire again. And then you also have this T wave over here, 
And that's going to be uh, when the ventricles relax. I know there are, you know, there are lots of benefits to the EKG. And the EKG allows us to check for things like um, electrolyte imbalances. And it also allows us um, to see if there are any uh, problems within the electrical conduction system of the heart. Now, one of the good benefits of uh, the heart is that it, can, it basically contracts and beats in a rhythm. Sometimes that doesn't happen. And when that doesn't happen, we call this an arrhythmia. And you can have different causes for arrhythmia. So the first thing we're going to look at is arrhythmias of the SA node. So you can have an alteration of the SA node. This first one is bradycardia, which is a slow rate. It's going to be less, less than 60 uh, action potentials or 60 beats per minute. And this is normally, um, this occurs normally in some people. Like my normal heart rate is anywhere from 40 to 50. And um, some people just have low heart rates. And then you can also find this in, in endurance athletes and uh, people with really high levels of physical fitness. Uh, so you're going to see really low heart rates. And this is normal for some people, but in some people it's not. And when it's not, you can look at different causes. So certain drugs will do it. Um, uh, certain conditions like hypothyroidism will do it. Um, then you have the other way, which is tachycardia. So this is going to be a slow rate. So tachycardia is your fast rate. And this is going to be anything greater than 100 beats per minute. And you're going to see this for a lot of reasons. The first one is the body has a great way of accounting for problems. And this is through things called com uh, compensatory actions. So if you have someone who has a low blood pressure and uh, we need to get the body needs to get perfused uh, better, what happens is the heart rate goes up because it says, hey, we need to make sure that we're getting all the necessary oxygen out to all the tissues. So you actually see it as a compensatory mechanism here. Another reason you, that uh, it sometimes occurs is that uh, this process of something called hemorrhagic anemia. Basically, you have anemia, which is low red blood cells, and it's caused by some sort of bleed. So if there's something like internal bleeding, what's happening is, is the body saying, hey, I'm not getting enough oxygen, so we need to increase how quickly we're getting it, so that will increase that heart rate. Then you have certain uh, types of drugs that will cause uh, an increased heart rate. So caffeine, nicotine, other stimulants, uh, these things will also increase the heart rate. And then lastly, you can get a fever from an, uh, from an increased heart rate. Now, there's also another cause of arrhythmias, and they're called an ectopic focus. And basically, there's another region of the heart that becomes highly active and acts like a pacemaker. And certain reasons for this are like decreased uh, blood flow to the heart muscle, stress or anxiety or um, excessive stimulant intake like um, caffeine or nicotine. And then uh, basically what happens is sometimes there's one specific area of the heart that causes this uh, pacemaker, ac pacemaker action. And this uh, one of these is called a premature ventricular contraction or a PVC. And what's happening is that the, the ventricles are being stimulated earlier before the atria. And so you'll get something um, so you'll get this abnormal wave on an EKG. And then sometimes there's this other thing called atrial flutter. And what's happening with atrial flutter is that the atria are contracting way faster than the ventricles are. Sometimes they can be in excess of 300 beats per minute. And that's just not an efficient pump. And then sometimes you can have other areas being uh, stimulated. So you have, this is called multiple foci. And fibrillation is a big one. Uh, and if we look back at our heart chambers, we have the atria and then we have the ventricles. If there is atrial fibrillation, basically what's happening is that the atria are quivering and they are just not acting like an efficient pump. Now you can also have something called a ventricular fibrillation. And this is a big problem. This is not compatible with life. Basically, uh, this, this causes this is caused by several reasons, but one of them is sometimes there's a clot that blocks perfusion to the actual heart muscle itself and the tissue starts to die and the and the ventricles basically quiver. Remember that the ventricles are kind of like the powerhouse and every time they squeeze, they need to get blood out to the rest of the body. So if they're not doing its job, the body's not getting pumped. And then sometimes there can even be damage to the atrioventricular node. And this messes up the ventricular conduction system. So you can have damage to the AV node um, you can have uh, damage to the fibers of the conduction system, uh, or you can have damage to the actual Purkinje fibers. 
And then sometimes there's an arrhythmia where the heart's basically not beating in unison. Um, for example, this is a like a two to one heart block. So the atria beat twice as fast as the ventricles and all the, uh, and all the um, action potentials aren't being transmitted down. So remember we go SA to AV and what's happening is this, this is getting its action potential every so often and there's a disruption in this process and so it's not getting sent down the line. Now the other thing that we can have is a myocardial infarction and that's the heart attack. To put it simply, a heart attack is where the tissue dies because there's a lack of result or a, there's a result of lack of oxygen. And the heart has a bunch of vessels that come in and it provides um, it provides uh, perfusion and, and uh, oxygen to all this tissue. Well, if there's a blood clot, the tissue doesn't get perfused and the tissue dies. You can see this is an area of uh, infarct here. And what happens is because there's no muscle to contract and to send out that, that conduction um, or to squeeze every time it gets an action potential, it basically stops. And what's going to happen is this is actually going to keep the action potential from going and talking to those other cells. But let's recap. When we're talking about the SA node, we're talking about the origination of that electrical conductivity in the heart. The AV node waits for the atrial contraction before sending the signal in the conduction path. Remember, this is made up of the bundle of His, the left and right bundle branches, and then the Purkinje fibers, which sends uh, the rest of the action potential out to the rest of the ventricle uh, for ventricular systole. Then you have the EKG, and this is an extremely useful tool for determining abnormal rhythms and an abnormal conduction. We love that our that we most of us have normal rhythms, but sometimes uh, arrhythmias can occur, and this is caused by that disruption in that conduction pathway. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.